Latin America. We're back. The second segment of our uh, split show. Thank you for taking your time this morning to join with us. We appreciate you. Uh, I want to mention that uh, I'm going this weekend up to um, the uh, Get Prepared Expo in Lebanon, Missouri. This is in uh, the Cowan Civic Center. And uh, this is put on by uh, Vince Finelli from USA Prepares. Or, yeah, USA Prepares. And uh, I'm inviting those of you who would like to go up there. If you're going to be up near Lebanon, I know that's a that's a hike for you. I'm actually going to be speaking up there at a seminar about um, the new media and how uh, interested individuals can take advantage of that. You want to be a radio host. What are the things that you need to prepare uh, hardware and also mentally and preparation in terms of content for that? And so uh, they've invited me to come up there. There are going to be 52 different seminars and over 60 exhibits. And um, this is the uh, largest uh, preparedness expo in the United States. So uh, if there's any way that you can uh, participate in that, uh, you're certainly welcome to go up there. If, you, um, if you're interested in attending, I've got a number of passes for families and couples. And so if you send me an email, I'll make sure I put you at the will call desk, and you can just come in and, and use your name, and uh, your passes will be there. It'll save you about $10 a person. Uh, going up there, so um, it's not a bad, not a bad opportunity. Um, I'll also be meeting with uh, a number of folks up there, including Joyce Riley, uh, Sheriff Richard Mack, and Sam Bushman, and John Moore, and Vince Finelli, Dr. Norman Sheely, uh, Joel Wallach. I'm also going to be meeting with uh, Beth Ann from the Common Sense Coalition and a number of other hosts. And our goal there is going to be to try to coordinate our efforts a little bit better so that we are, as radio people, acting as the tip of the spear, and that we are making sure our efforts are better coordinated uh, by introducing our audiences to each other, and in addition to that, by uh, making sure that we are attacking this dragon as a unified team versus individuals just slashing away at the one scale we see. So um, I think it's an excellent opportunity for America's Voice Now and myself to be involved in this group. I'm, I'm honored that they've asked me to, to participate in the seminar. And uh, if there's any way that you would like to attend that, please feel free to uh, send me an email to mike at americasvoicenow.org. That's mike at americasvoicenow.org. And um, indicate on there in the subject line uh, tickets for USA Prepares or tickets for the seminar. And what I'll do is I'll put your name on a will call list up there. This is occurring tonight now, all the way through Sunday night. And um, I'll put your name on a will call list. Tomorrow, uh, we will have recorded programming because I will not be here. I'll be up there, and uh, I'll actually be in one of the seminars, or I'd try to do the show live, but I can't really do that if I'm in a seminar. So um, uh, we're also going to try to uh, record the seminar portion about uh, the, the – uh, uh, radio hosting, and the reason behind that is we want to give you folks an opportunity who can't make it, who might have an interest in it, to be able to capture that. So I'll put that up on, as a stream on on uh, YouTube and our website as well. Um, make sure that you visit our website at americasvoicenow.org, and please make sure that you uh, visit our, our uh, Facebook page. We hit 700 likes this morning. That's very nice. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it, and welcome to all of our new friends and followers. Um, I would like to uh, make sure that, you know, you understand the importance of that because the more people that w when you like it, you know, it shows up on your timeline, other people read it, and it's exposure, right? It gets the word and message out. So we had a story that went up on World Net Daily uh, last night that was in reference to this uh, a story I did on the propaganda uh, announcement. Uh, it's up on World Net Daily. Actually, it made the cover of their uh, splash page on their website. So it's WND.com. That's W, like whiskey, November, Delta, WND.com. And the story is new law allows Obama to take over all media. And uh, it does. This is the idea of utilizing propaganda to interleave it in stories where we will never now, from this point forward, we will never know what is the truth. We will never, ever again know what is the truth and what is a government fiction. Because with this opening... We are 
for all intents and purposes, blindsided now. We'll never know. Is this a government propaganda story or a true news article? And there's no way to determine it. There's no way to put your finger down on it and say, this is and this is not. The passage of that, of that was a sad day for America. And most Americans have no idea it even happened. All they've done is solidified the position they've taken for many years, but now they can do it with complete, blatant, open disregard for the law. Or the rule of law. I mean, they've made it a law, but that doesn't make it legal. Okay. Uh, if you have an opportunity, make sure that you get a chance to see uh, uh, Greg McLaughlin over at blackopsschoolofcombat.com. Blackopsschoolofcombat.com. He has a uh, excellent uh, concealed carry course that he does, $75 a person. But he also has uh, a, a number of other programs and courses that he does on uh, pistol tactics, rifle tactics, things like that. You know, training is one of the most important things that you can do for yourself, and we strongly encourage you to do that. You can reach him at 417-255-1612. That's 417-255-1612. And uh, make sure that you get a hold of Greg and that you uh, make it apparent that you would like to get some training with him. He's an excellent trainer, has a, a bio that's very, very, very uh, uh, highly recommended. And uh, I think you'll be impressed with the program that he teaches, the charges that he has. Uh, very, very reasonable for what he does, and you will not be disappointed at the end. And you'll get some invaluable skill sets that you can uh, keep forever. So, uh, listen, the, the one thing they can't take away from us is knowledge, right? And let's make sure that we're uh, getting, giving ourselves all of that opportunity. Um, make sure that you see our friends over at uh, Spring Creek Beef as well. Uh, they are a 100% uh, natural uh, grass-fed beef, no grain, no hormones, no antibiotics. They ship around the country at Spring creekbeef.com okay um the real the real issue here and what i wanted to talk about after the first half was what should we be doing as an organized set of patriots to try to put some restoration back into this issue and you know many of you have heard me talk about this before but we know that we are pretty close i mean bernanke has actually confirmed if we were to tighten monetary policy the economy would tank what does that tell you? That tells you that there's a, there's a shell game going on. You ever watch a shell game? The guy puts the, the marble under the, the walnuts and moves them around, and your, your, jo your job is to try to find it, and, of course, it costs you $20 to pick the ball, and, and invariably you lose. Well, the reason is because they're not prepared yet. Their preparations aren't in full-blown flowering. They haven't matured. They're working on it. Things like this propaganda bill, things like this NDAA issue, things like uh, drone usage domestically here in the United States. But they're, they haven't, and they haven't wrapped up Obamacare yet, which is, by the way, one of the planks of almost every totalitarian uh, manifesto, which says that you must have national health care in order to control the masses. You must. That's what the ACA or Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, was really all about. It has nothing to do with health care. has nothing to do with insuring the uninsured. It has nothing to do with insuring illegals or legals or any other eels. It had everything to do with how do we control and build a dossier and document every single American. The NSA is doing it by monitoring everything that you do, your phone calls, your Internet serve, uh, surfing, your... Uh, your email communications. They're building dossiers on every American. To what end? Tell me how that bodes well for America. I mean, use your critical thinking skills. Show me one reason that you... Give me one example of how that will benefit you. If you can find one, call me here and let me know what it is. I'd love to hear it. I want to hear one legitimate, well-reasoned, good argument for how building dossiers on every American benefits you as an individual and this nation as a whole. Don't give me the terrorism argument, because that's bunk. There's 315 million of us, at least that we know about, and I'm not buying the terrorism argument, because that percentage is a microcosm of the total population. 
I got a call here, so let's hear what he has to say. Go ahead. You have a you have a, an example? Yes, it'll keep vast volumes of bureaucrats employed with one hand washing the other constantly. Okay, but that's not that's true. But that's not a benefit to you as an individual or to America as a whole. Of course it is. <laughs> it keeps the economy going, buddy. Oh yeah. Yeah, gee, I thanks. am joking. You realize that. I do. I know you're being facetious. Thank you. <laughs> but thanks for the for the inserting the uh the ridiculous into the uh, sublime. Here, here's the problem. We're not prepared for this, and we need to be. And here's how we should be preparing. The Tea Party, the Constitution Party, the Libertarian Party, patriotic groups of all makes, shapes, sizes, and manners, whether they are five people or 5,000 people or 5 million people, we should be in an organized race right now to find, qualify, approve, and vet qualified candidates to step into the role once this entire thing blows up. What do I mean by that? Well, we do know that Congress has completely betrayed us and sold us down the river for either 30 pieces of silver or a bowl of soup or to protect the skeletons in their own personal closets. You can pick any one of the three. I don't really care which one it is. They're either, they've either sold us down the road for money, 30 pieces of silver. They've sold our birthright for a bowl of soup. That means a seat at the table, whatever comes after this. Or they've sold us down the river for protection of whatever it is that the NSA has on them that they don't want out there in the public environment. That's it. There is no other excuse. Ego, maybe. But even that falls under the 30 pieces of silver. So there's three reasons why Congress will not be a viable entity going forward. And so we should have a group of well-qualified, well-vetted people in place to step into that role. Because like Egypt, if we don't, what we'll end up with is anarchy. Anarchy or chaos. And chaos always leads to anarchy. You see, we can't have a vacuum in government for even a microsecond because a nanosecond's worth of vacuum gets filled. And at some point, Americans are going to want to rise up like 33 million out of 85 million Egyptians. And when America decides that it's time to walk like an Egyptian, if we don't have qualified candidates to insert into a new republic, it's going to be far too late for us to try to organize then. You see, the time now is the time to prepare. Like a squirrel, we should be socking away food for the coming winter. Our organizations out there of political ilk who don't agree and who are neither Republican nor Democrat, because both of those parties have sold us down the river. Remember that. They are unqualified permanently to participate in this. Why? Well, because they're more interested in the party than they are in the benefit of the United States of America and the republic and the people that live within it. And they've shown us that over generations of betrayals. I mean, the idea that they can support this immigration bill on either party is anathema to the principles of liberty and freedom and rule of law and representative government. How can you explain to me any representation that benefits America that includes immigration? That immigration bill. There isn't one. And irrespective of whatever nonsense they throw at you, there is no benefit to that issue. Not, not to this nation. Not the way that law is written. Seal the borders. Nothing happens until then. We have a cooling off period where everyone who's an illegal must register. 
whether that's six months or a year, is immaterial. Oh, it doesn't have to be done now. Don't take those excuses of hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We've had illegal immigration in this country for the last hundred years. Suddenly, we've got to fix it tomorrow by Wednesday? Tomorrow's actually Saturday, but... I mean, the argument is absurd. They've been pouring across this border like an open faucet for decades. And suddenly, you have to close it today? Oh, by the way, that door has no lock, and it's not solid. It's like a screen, so the water can just keep coming right through. We don't have a plan in place. We're not prepared for the inevitable upheaval that will come. Because at some point, somebody is going to try to drop the hammer of totalitarianism on this nation. If it's not Obama and we actually make it to 2016 and beyond, then it'll be the next guy or girl. The goal is still the goal. It's not going to change just because the name or the face of the party changes. Our job, our goal, our focus should be preparing the way so that when the inevitable happens, and it is inevitable, people, we are prepared to have a pre-designed pre-qualified, pre-prepared entity to put in place and say, this is the new representative Republican government that will operate as a short-term measure until true, constitutionally uh, deployed ele- or employed elections can occur. We're not going to have the time to sit down and say, well, okay, let's begin to organize now Because once martial law is declared, once there's a national emergency, once financial, the the financial economics of this thing tank the country, and then they declare martial law inevitably anyway, and they cut off the lines of communication, how are we going to organize then? By shortwave radio? Isn't it a little late at that point to decide to shut the doors? The horses are gone. They've left the barn. Our job now is to find, qualify, prepare a group of qualified individuals who will step up to the plate and act as a short-term interim measure. Otherwise, you'll have all these warring factions out there, just like they've got going on in Egypt. And who won there? The Muslim Brotherhood. And they beat the heck out of that country for a year before the people finally said, whoa, stop right there. That's just too far. And they rose up again. Now the military had to intervene. God only knows where that'll go. And by the way, for the record, and I broke this going back a month and a half ago, the military has given itself in the congressional in the uh, the federal register by a rule change the wherewithal and the ability to take control of our civilian government did you know that in the event that they cannot get orders from the executive and the commander in chief and it's ill defined that's all that it says if in the event that they are out of communication with the commander in chief they can control and take control of our government the military if you can give me a constitutional justification for that, I'll give you a hundred bucks. So, is that what we want? I, I grant it. In that register, there's you know the statement is that they will hold on to they will they will maintain control until such time as it's appropriate to give the government back to civilian authority. Hey, wait a second. We've heard that from every dictator who's ever had a military coup for the last thousand years. Is that good for America? I don't think so. Do we want this to be a military junta? I don't think so. 
What do you think, by the way? Our founder said we shouldn't have a standing army. That was the fear. That this nation would become a military dictatorship. They didn't want that. And for good reason. Unless we have a plan, well-organized, well-coordinated, and well-vetted individuals who will, will stick to constitutional principles and commit to that in writing in a contract, we are not prepared. Now, I've had this discussion before. You've heard me throw out different ideas. Realistically, the right appropriate method here is to have these candidates stand there and, and commit to a contract, a an enforceable contract. Liquidated damages say that if they break the contract, we immediately remove them from office. That's it. It's still within the Constitution because you can sign away your right to be a part of a contract and have liquidated damages. And that liquidated and, and, the, and the, the requirement is, one, that you commit that you will uh, serve only as an interim step and measure until qualified candidates can be primaried and we can go back to a normal, realistic, appropriate form of constitutional government under a republic, not a democracy. They have to agree that that term is limited. But if we're not preparing here, and we're not even thinking about these things, all we're thinking about is, this is, un this is unfair, this is unreasonable, this is dangerous for us. Okay, so what's the mitigation plan, people? I mean, really, you have to have one. Who are, who are the patriotic founders who are going to rise up for this particular crisis? Where's our Patrick Henrys? Where are our John Adams? Where are our George Washingtons? Where is our Thomas Jeffersons now? Find me one, please. Tell me who they are. Tell me who you'd be willing to stand there and say, I would be willing to fight to the death because I believe that this person has just, honest, moral, ethical, honor, integrity, and fiber in him, and that he will do the right thing for the, for the benefit of this country and, its, and the nation, not for his own personal ego, financial benefit, aggrandizement, etc. Find me those people, please. That is what we should be doing now. All of our efforts should be on that. Why all of our efforts? Because the clock is ticking down. And we are very, very short. And we don't know what that trigger will be. But even Bernanke says, if we were to tighten policy, the economy would tank. What? What? Folks, you can't get any closer than that. Detroit just went bankrupt. Obama has, according to the courts, the right to indefinitely detain Americans under the National Defense Authorization Act. The NSA is building dossiers on every American. Eric Holder is... Got to be the most partisan, racist, I mean, the most unlawful chief of all law enforcement in the nation that we have ever had. I mean, here's a guy who's been, who's been found in conflict, criminally and civilly, found in contempt. And he's still running the law enforcement of the nation. It's appalling. What are we going to do to prepare? I'm throwing the question out there. Let's have that discussion. You're listening to America's Voice now. My name is Michael Evans. 
You can find us every day at americasvoicenow.org. You can find us on the web at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. This and every other show that we do is placed up there every single day. And then you can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. We post up stories, information up there every day that is outside the propaganda of the mainstream media you should be aware of. We'll see you tomorrow. Or we'll see you on Monday morning. Have a great day. The best shows in Branson are now playing at the Americana Theater. Don't miss 